So, yes, yeah, so tell us what the BBC guy was saying. So, the BBC guy, Justin Rolat, was crying into his mouth. Oh, yes, I remember him. Uh, Isn't well, he the guy that flew all the way to Alicante last he year? He is. To tell us he was hot in Spain. And that's right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, welcome to the real world. And Brilliant. he's now saying there's basically everybody's trying to justify why they're at this COP29 right. conference because uh, America is, is going to take, take a, a complete change of yeah. course and pull out of the Paris climate well, this agreement, is why, quite you know, sensibly. We, we, did, we did this last week. I don't think we've spoken since, uh, since Trump won. Um, not only did he win, I mean, it's a completely clean sweep. He's won every single swing state. He's won the Senate. Looks like he's probably going to win the House. You know, he is going to change politics in the Western world, isn't he? Uh, without question. Mm. And people are waking up to this new reality. And I think it's actually quite exciting mm. because the focus I is going to be on economic growth, yeah. making citizens better off, quite a good thing. Maybe right. we should try that, yeah. uh, as opposed as to the opposed last to five milking them. As opposed taking, to milking them. Yeah. And uh, he's going to say, actually, as a sovereign nation, protecting our borders is quite important. Mm. And so he's going to protect his borders yeah. and deport those who've come to well, his, America his speech illegally. Already, we're not going to play it just now, but we have played it already. His speech about how they're going to basically go after the criminal gangs, uh, who are literally the proper criminal gangs in America, the Venezuelans, the Mexicans, he's going to deport them. If they come back into the country, automatic 10 years in prison. And if they kill anybody and commit crimes of capital nature, uh, they're going to be executed. That's called you a know, deterrent. Be quite it's, useful uh, if we had a that, deterrent. That is a definite deterrent. I know there will be people squeamish over their breakfast going, mm, we don't like the death penalty. Well, fine, you don't like the death penalty. I don't like the death penalty that innocent people are suffering from by people who come here and kill them. I don't like that either. It's about creating a deterrent so that people stop entering mm. one's country illegally. Yeah. And that is the first and foremost role of a prime minister, a home secretary and a government. Exactly. And our own one is failing and President-elect Trump is, sh is showing us how it should be done, and he's focusing on economic growth, and I think that's absolutely yeah. fantastic. And and we've now got a situation. I mean, the budget fallout here yeah. is growing, yeah. not reducing. Totally. You've got you've got businesses. It's all over the newspapers. We just spoke to a farmer just before you came on, bottom end of the last hour, who says, you know, they're going to have a demonstration. They might go on strike because you know they need to stop this ridiculous. The, the, the farmers are raging about this, mm. and I think that uh, the. The protests on the 19th will, will show that anger yeah. and fury. But also you've got businesses from all walks of life now basically withdrawing mm. investments, uh, removing their manufacturing yeah. facilities overseas. I've heard, I know a farmer that's withdrawn a million pound investment mm. into an additional uh, extension of his strawberry growing facilities yeah. because of these changes. So, you know, far from creating growth, this budget is actually destroying the strawberry jobs fields are not forever, and destroying. Then. And the, so those strawberry fields are not forever, they ain't coming. They're not coming, <laughs> they're not coming <laughs> at all. They ain't coming, not growing. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Remembrance Sunday because there's a big issue with reform and why Nigel Farage yes. was not able to lay a wreath. Have a look at Stephen Flynn. Uh, this is uh, the various, there were nine prime ministers, by the way, uh, yesterday there in attendance, which I think is the first time there's been such a high number. But Stephen Flynn, who's the leader of the SNP in Westminster, was there. Um, I don't know why he bothered. Have a look. So for those of you who can't see that, um, he's basically standing behind uh, Ed Davey not singing the national anthem. I mean, truly Just extraordinary, not actually. I mean, even if you can't sing or if yeah. you've got a bad voice, yeah. you could at least mouth it yes. and show some respect right. for an incredibly important and solemn occasion. Because it's not about but for him. him. To stand, he's essentially having a protest. Yeah. And I just think that yeah. is uh, just totally inappropriate. It I is. wonder what on earth he thought he was doing. By the way, he was there. Uh, also, uh, as a representative for the Welsh political party, oh. Plaid Cymru, oh. because it turns out that they have a special arrangement. Oh, really? Yes, it turns out. Uh, they have some amendment to some 1984 protocol that right. apparently was agreed between the late Queen and the then Speaker, right. uh, which, by the way, no one can seem to find a copy no. of this agreement, and which, by the way, is not referenced in the whole of Hansard's. Mm. Uh, sort so of what is it like? You go in this year. So what is it? You go this year. We'll go next year. Exactly. Something like that. So there's an amendment there. They seem mm. to find a, a way of amending that. Right. It seems that the DUP had an amendment to this so-called protocol oh, in yeah. 1984, mm. uh, so that they, as the biggest party of so the it involved doesn't nation, whether they've so got six all of these other parties yeah. can get their own special deals, their own special mm. amendments, their own special arrangements. But when it comes to Reform UK, they've got more votes than the Lib Dems, the DUP. 
and the Scott Nats put together, yeah. combined, Nigel Farage mm. was not allowed to be laying a wreath alongside the no. others. And I'm sorry, I'm actually pretty wound up about yeah, that. Yeah, no, you should and be. And I say some people criticise me for politicising what is a very solemn occasion. Yes, it is. And 4.1 million people voted mm. to put us in the House of Commons. They voted for us to be represented. And that includes, as far as I'm concerned, being represented at the most solemn, important right. day, Remembrance Sunday. But isn't it funny how so many people on social media yesterday, in response to your complaints, were, were experts uh, in constitutionally about how many people you had to have in your party and how many people you had to have in the, in the House of Commons before you could be it's, invited. It's, and it's, as somebody pointed out, well, when uh, you get six MPs, they'll make the, the threshold of suddenly become seven. Yeah. I, and you won't be able to do it the whole thing, the, the, I'm sorry, the whole thing is a, is a stitch-up. Yeah. They, they made amendments and alternative arrangements mm. for other political parties, and they should have had the decency to do so for us. Yes. And I will be specifically asking the Speaker for an amendment mm. for next year. I am not a happy bunny about no, this. No, I think they're absolutely right. They don't like you guys, do they? Because you've come in and you've gone, look, well, that's all very well for what you used to do. Now we want to do it this way. And there is nothing in any constitution, since it's not written down anyway, which says that you can't make an allowance. There well, is absolutely everything to say... That's the whole point. That's that, how you make progress. Yeah, exactly. There's absolutely everything to say that you're in the right. Because everybody knows the way that politics works in this country, the way that Parliament works in this country, uh, is, is by nudging a wink. And a kind of, you know, OK, then, well, we'll do this and, you know, we'll be all right. A bit like... Uh, you know, when Mr. Speaker decided that you weren't allowed to ask a question about something which might be a bit embarrassing let's, let's, because let's, apparently uh, it was going to um, influence a trial. What a load of old cobblers. I think what is going on here, and when I make this specific request, mm. I suspect that you will find all sorts of people, basically, they don't want a picture of Nigel Farage holding a wreath yeah. in that picture. That's what's going on yeah. here. And, well, let's wait and see. Yeah, I think it's a very fair fight. I'm certainly going to back you on it. I'm going to play you something which uh, you may find amusing. This is John Sopel, a man who used <laughs> to work for the BBC, uh, now works for some outfit called the News Agents. So I think we're better off just delivering the papers. This is a guy who, first of all, used to defend Hugh Edwards uh, and say how terrible it was that he was being, you know, hounded by the tabloid press shortly before working out that actually he'd been pleading guilty to some paedophile offences. Uh, he's now chucked him under the bus. But here he is talking at the weekend about shock horror Joe Biden um, not being very well I believe I believe it's going to become one of the great political scandals of our time about how the White House covered up the true physical and mental condition of Joe Biden for the two years before we saw him get on the debate stage now, this is the same guy, by the way, who uh, defended Joe Biden right up to the moment he was pulled from the race to say it's absolutely fine. And of course he'll beat Donald Trump. You know, these people are deluded, deranged. It, it, is, it is extraordinary. Well, it's, it's back to this whole Trump derangement syndrome that yes. seems to have taken over. But, uh, you know, that uh, statement from John Sopel, if you look back at his previous statements, mm. as you've just inferred, uh, the, 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 the size and scale of the cover-up, both yeah. within the White House and within the mainstream media, yeah. not just in America, but here in the UK mm. and in other developed nations, uh, I think actually for once he may actually be onto something mm. in that it is absolutely seismic and the truth will come out. Right. And it'll be interesting what, uh, what inquiries uh, President-elect Trump Right. launches once he is actually Absolutely in right. the White House. Well, let's not forget, Keir Starmer went over to uh, the US shortly before Joe Biden pulled out of the race came back and told us all he was absolutely fine. Absolutely. Had a great meeting with him in the White House. He said he was asked, you know, what's his, what's his mood, you know, how is his cognitive ability? Oh, absolutely brilliant. That's absolutely right. no problem he, at all. He, he Nothing wrong with that him. he was sharp as a button. Yeah. <laughs> Just what, the does whole that thing. Tell you, what does that tell you about our Prime Minister? Well, I think it tells a lot about uh, the establishment mm. all over the world trying yeah. to defend and protect the indefensible. Yeah. And I think actually the American people and the way they voted, mm. I think they have actually said, you know, we don't like being lied to by our political and establishment right. class. Well, this is the thing that I think has put the absolute fear of God into the Labour Party, because I'm still of the opinion, and I can't, you know, I can't tell you why I feel like this, I'm still of the opinion that something bad is going to happen to the Labour Party, something terrible is going to come out and they're going to have to have an early election. I don't know why I think that. I just feel that there's so much going on behind the scenes, that they're so secretive about everything that they've done. We still haven't got to the bottom of the Lord Alley scenario. We found out at the weekend, by the way, the Dean Street Townhouse is a place I used to hang out in all the time. I don't go anymore because it's full of lefties. Um, turns out Lord Alley uh, was having lunch with Sue Gray there the other day. What's all that? Go? What's all that about? I think anything anything is possible. Yeah. Whether it's uh, you know whether it's the sort of the cover-ups about the the extent of of donations to various 
party members. Yeah. I, I think the more likely scenario, actually, is uh, the, the economic situation, mm. because many people now are seriously worried, myself included, mm. about the state of the financial markets. The cost of yeah. government borrowing now mm. is at record highs. And it's, also the money that is leaving this leaving, country. The people leaving. But it, we, we are heading towards some form of serious financial crisis. Yeah with this trajectory because growth is not there, the cost of energy is soaring, uh, we're likely to run out mm. of electricity at some yeah. point, and so totally. I, th I think there, there are a variety of crises coming down the pipe and they're going to hit us hard mm. in the face and I'm afraid it's going to be pretty painful, but that is the sort of scenario that I see that will will wake many people up who think that all is fine and dandy mm. and you can just print money willy-nilly yeah. for as long as you want. Well, I'm afraid it's not, no. unless we get some economic growth uh, things could get very uncomfortable at mm. some point, and that, for me, is the likeliest early trigger to a political yes. crisis. And also, Keir Starmer going off to France today, he's not just grandstanding and standing around with Emmanuel Macron, he's also going to be talking about Trump, he's also going to be talking about Ukraine, he's going to try and forge some kind of alliance with the European Union. The people of this country, from what I can see, would rather he forged an alliance with Donald Trump. Absolutely, well, because that's where the prosperity is, mm. that's where the economic growth is. Mm. We should be moving ourselves as far away from the EU and their daft rules and regulations as possible yeah. so that we can create some growth in this country. Because otherwise, I mean, look, Germany is still in recession. I mean, all these people who say, you know, why can't we go back into the single market and get closer? Why would you yeah. want to go back into a failing yeah. model well, where Germany's I mean, in recession? Germany, not only is it in recession, the government is in free fall. It's, it's about to collapse or it has already collapsed. I mean, all of this happened since Keir Starmer went to visit Olaf Schultz, you know, ever since he's been there. You know, <laughs> he's, like, he's like a curse, they've isn't just, he, travelling yeah, around? He is, What's he's like a grim, grim reaper. You know, <laughs> stay away, don't, don't come anywhere come. near us. Don't cross the border. As soon as he saw Olaf Schultz, you know, suddenly the right wing won a load of, of, of power. Uh, we suddenly had them closing the borders, saying that we don't want any more immigrants coming in. Now the government's collapsed altogether. I mean, he literally is like a kiss of death. I think he really is. But unfortunately for the British people, it's the kiss of the death of our economy that mm. I'm most worried about. Mm. And, and the lack of prosperity, people losing their jobs, uh, n new jobs not being created, people not investing, people mm. not taking risk. Yeah. At the end of the day, You've got to make work pay and you've got to make risk-taking right. pay. Otherwise, we are heading for a bad place. And what about this on the front of the Telegraph today? I mean, this is the hospitality industry, uh, something quite close to my heart. Pubs and restaurants <laughs> sold, suck it up over your national insurance increases. You know, I've been talking to pub owners um, all of the last, last week, and some of the biggest hospitality businesses are talking about shutting pubs, talking about firing people, talking about just not doing the business anymore. Oh, it's, and it's, it's really tough. Of and, you know, I've got... Hospitality businesses in my constituency, mm. Boston and Skegness, uh, the Bateman Brewery, they're all yeah. raging at these increases, the, the, uh, the cost that is having on their, uh, their activities, mm. uh, the reduction in investment, and you've got pubs closing. And prices are going to go up, and, so and customers are going to be going to go up where, where people, businesses, think they can get away with putting mm. the prices up to try and stay in profit. But it's a very tough, very tough mm. environment. A lot of people are just saying, it's not worth the hassle. No. It's not worth taking the yeah. risk, the extra hard work. I might as well just uh, do what I'm doing a little bit smaller yes. with a bit less risk mm. and... And less ambition. And less ambition. Right. And you don't create growth in a country if you've got that attitude no. from entrepreneurs and businesses. No, exactly. That's what's going on. Final question on Nigel Farage. I mean, he's now the single most powerful man in Parliament when it comes to the relationship, the special relationship with Donald Trump. Um, he said on this show, when he was on uh, the morning after the uh, the election result, he was willing to, to, to be a kind of bridge for Keir Starmer uh, to reach out to Donald Trump to do a trade deal. I mean, I've never expected Donald Trump to put a, a bad trade deal to the, U to the UK. I've always thought he would, he would do the right thing. But you know, Nigel now is in a sort of prime position, isn't he? What's he's he going to do? He's in a very important position where, hopefully, uh, through his uh, his good advice, we can ensure that the UK is mm. not caught up in any form of tariffs that mm. get imposed on EU countries. And it's not surprising Amer uh, President-elect Trump is a bit grumpy with the EU because the EU keeps fining big, right. successful American corporations yeah, right. and trying to make life harder for them. So... Uh, don't be surprised. And what, uh, you know, hopefully we can assure is that the UK actually gets closer to the US, mm. uh, is prevented, uh, kept away from any tariffs, because that would harm our, our trading relationship with the US. And that's our biggest single trading partner. It's our biggest, also, our biggest trading surplus. Right, of course. Richard, great to see you. Thank great you very much indeed for coming in. Richard Tyson.